To recap, we said that the function of myoglobin is to bind oxygen very tightly all the time in the muscles so that it can grab as much oxygen from the blood as the blood courses through various tissues. We also said that one myoglobin has one heme and one iron and therefore it can only bind one oxygen using this formula here uh, where we form this complex between myoglobin and oxygen. So reversible complex can form but it can also fall apart. I want to introduce a really interesting and important concept or skill for us here in this whole unit and that is understanding the oxygen saturation curve which is shown right over here. An oxygen saturation curve is something that doctors in the emergency room think about all the time. Um, and it has to do with how much oxygen is found in various tissues throughout the body. This is how it works. We're going to have a plot, and on the y-axis it's going to be percent oxygen saturation. What that is, is if you take a particular uh, molecule like myoglobin or hemoglobin and you have a population of those molecules you ask how much of that population has an oxygen bound and it's a percent so it's going to go from 0 to 100 it's just a percent of saturation on the x-axis we have the amount of oxygen you have in any particular test tube or tissue or whatever you're studying now we don't call this the molarity of oxygen because oxygen is not typically thought of as a solute. Instead we're going to use a small p O2 like that and PO2 is the partial pressure of oxygen and your book and uh, most books tend to use the scale of tor for pressure rather than atmospheres or millimeters of mercury and a typical uh, scale for tor is 0 to 100 tor and that's just a coincidence that it goes to 100 it's not percent like we saw on the x-axis now what a tor mean well this is going to be best reflected in the types of tissues that we have in the body and in particular I want to point out that if you take a nice fresh breath into your lungs it's going to have a lot of oxygen in it. That tends to be on the high side, maybe 80, 90, or 100 tor. And where your muscles are, particularly active muscles, they're going to be using up the oxygen in respiration, and it's going to tend to be lower tor because it doesn't have as much, and it can go very low, especially under active respiration in very highly active muscles. So, what does an oxygen saturation curve look like for myoglobin? I usually start this description by the endpoints. For instance, let's take a different color here. We'll use green. And let's point out that if you have no oxygen at all, zero tor in a tissue or in a test tube full of myoglobin, you can't have any saturation. If there's no oxygen there, how can you have any bound? So, zero, zero is always going to be a point on these saturation curves. Then I like to go all the way in the other direction and say that if we were to put 100 tor, or let's say infinity tor, let's go all the way as high as we can, eventually the oxygen will saturate at 100%. So we're going to assume that when we get up in this range, it's going to tangent out at 100%. You can't have 110% oxygen bound. It's just, that's the limit. Now, I want you to think through, let's do a little thought experiment here. If the purpose of myoglobin, or the function of it, is to bind oxygen very tightly, how are we going to draw everything in between? Pause for a second and think that through. What shape uh, what part of the graph should be occupied by our line if oxygen binds very tightly to hemoglobin?
Now the answer to that question is that when you have something binding very tightly to myoglobin, you don't need much of it to get oxygen saturation bound to a high degree. What that means is the curve is going to rise even at low oxygen concentration. It's going to be pretty high and it's going to look like this. Notice how the curve is kind of tucked way up in the upper left hand corner. That basically what we're saying there is even down here where you don't have much oxygen around, you still have good saturation. Isn't that what you want for something that's in the muscles? Even if there's not much oxygen as the tissue, uh, the blood flows through, it's going to be still picking it up and becoming saturated. So this curve has got a special name for it. It's called a hyperbola. And the way hyperbolas work is they start at zero, they start at some slope, and the slope gets progressively less until it tangents flat at some value, in this case at 100%. Okay, we've covered a lot of ground, we're almost done, but there's one critical thing that we want to talk about. And I'm going to start this last conversation by asking you a question. Listen to this carefully. How much oxygen, in other words, what PO2 do you have to raise the oxygen level to to get 50% of your myoglobin having oxygen bound and 50% empty? Pause for a moment and answer that question. How much PO2 to get to 50% saturation? Okay, I hope you had a chance to think that through. Let's consider it again. Here is 50% saturation of myoglobin. That's the point where half of the molecules have an oxygen, half don't. And what we need to do is draw a line over to our curve and then drop it down to here. And this is going to be the value on the x-axis and that is going to be called capital P subscript 50. And that's exactly what I asked a moment ago. Uh, P50 is equal to the oxygen partial pressure, PO2, that gives 50% saturation. It's an important term. It's kind of like pKa was for us when we talked about acids and bases. It's something we're going to use an awful lot. Now, the myoglobin P50 is equal to... I don't know, maybe about four tor. That is a constant, meaning myoglobin always has a P50 of four tor. Okay, let me ask you one more question. If you have a protein that binds oxygen tightly, would you expect the P50 to be lower or higher than one that binds it weakly? Let's think that through, pause, and then come back. Okay, the question was, do you expect P50 to be low or high for something that binds oxygen tightly? And the answer comes from rationalizing like this. When you have a P50 that is way over to the left, that is low on the, y, the x axis, that's an indication that it takes very little oxygen to get a good saturation. That means it binds well. And that's our take-home message here, is that a low P50 value means tight oxygen binding. It's a critical issue for this entire chapter. And look, myoglobin has a low P50. It's only 4 tor. That means myoglobin binds oxygen really tightly. And that's a good thing because that's what its function is.